began in 2019. That was three years ago. And uh, I wanted to review that lesson tonight because it ties in with the lesson we're actually going to have tonight, part one of two. And we won't be able to do uh, all three por portions of this lesson tonight. Part two is still in process. And so I hope to share that with you a week from tonight. And I hope we have some music then and stuff, you know. But uh, a lot of uh, God's people in years gone by, even in Bible days, they met in homes and they may not have had a whole lot of music. And sometimes we depend on music to set the stage for the Word of God. And there's nothing wrong with that. And the Bible tells us that we need to make melody in our heart. And uh, you may not have an instrument to do that, but we have a heart and we can love God from the depths of our heart. An old song says, I want to be a Christian in my heart, down in my heart. And so if we're not a Christian down in our heart, are we a Christian at all? Praise God. Let's love the Lord once again. We love you, Jesus. Uh, we thank you, O oh God, for your mighty power. We thank you for your people, Lord, the opportunity we have to serve you in these last days. Bless your people tonight, O oh God, and minister to each one as whatever our need might be this night. We give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Praise God. Won't you shake hands with your neighbor if you're on speaking terms? And you may be seated. Lord bless you. Praise God. And uh, I, have, I have this handout because I don't think you have yours from when this um, lesson was given on July the 10th of 19 and then 11 years before that, this same lesson was given. And so, uh, Sarah, can you help us to pass these out? I think there's enough here for everybody that's here tonight. And the title of this lesson was Things Most Precious. Thank you so much. And I filled in the blanks whenever we gave that lesson. We left the blanks in there uh, and passed it out. Uh, if you fill in all the blanks, it's easy for people to jump ahead of what you're saying. And they may be reading what, and wondering about the blanks and everything. Or if the blanks are filled in, they may be going way ahead of you and lose what you're saying like right now. And so I like the fill in the blank situation. But I fill these in for you. And uh, it had to do with uh, things most precious. And before we do that we're going to ask. Uh, Brother, uh, Brother Zivney. Is Brother Zivney still here? Okay. All right. We're gonna ha uh, we're gonna take an offering tonight, and then we'll pass it on to uh, Sister Hopi, I believe. I think that's probably what we need to do. We're gonna pass the uh, offering that's taken tonight. Praise the Lord, Brother Phillips. Do you feel like helping us with the offering tonight? There's a uh, offering bag is back there, I think, and the slip. I just gave Brother Zivni a lesson on how to take the offering. <laughs> And so I don't see him. And so uh, he'll show up sooner or later. If you'd like, well, why don't you bring your offering to the front? That's the way they usually do it. And uh, give us unto the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. How many remembers that chorus, bless that wonderful name of Jesus? Remember that? Praise God. All right, why don't we sing that if we, if we, can, if we can. And uh, <clears throat> his name is above every name. The Bible says that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess of things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth, that he is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so God the Father is a scriptural term. God the Son, God the Holy Ghost are not really scriptural terms. And so, thank God. Now, uh, Brother uh, Phillips, if you would go with uh, Brother uh, Zivney, 
there's always supposed to be two guys to help with the offering. So that's our church policy. And uh, that way you don't, go, you don't leave the building with your, with your pockets full, right? You don't want to do that. Praise God. Why don't we stand together again if you don't mind? And uh, it's hard to hold the mic and clap your hands and stuff, but if you'll clap, uh, well, we'll make it. We'll make it somehow. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. So oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus, and there's no other name I know. Well, I've been baptized in that name of Jesus. I've been baptized in that name of Jesus. I've been baptized in that name of Jesus, and there's no other name I know. So I'm going to bless that wonderful name of Jesus. So bless that wonderful name of Jesus. I'm going to bless that wonderful name of Jesus. And there's no other name I know. Let's love the Lord again. Thank you, Jesus. Give him a hand tonight. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you, mighty God. You are Savior, our Lord, and our God. We appreciate you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated. The Lord bless you tonight. Um, we're going to look at this uh, lesson very briefly, and I filled in the blanks for you so we can move along. And... Uh, this was entitled, Things Most Precious. And uh, so we're reviewing as of today's date, if you no notice, that is 8-3-22. And this particular sheet was, uh, and lesson was given on seven ten of 19. That was three years ago. And then the original lesson that I believe the Lord gave me on Things Most Precious was given in 2008. That was 14 years ago, right? But this lesson hasn't changed. It's still the same. And you remember Peter said before he, was, before he went to the end of his life, he says that I don't, uh, I'm, in so many words he was saying, I just want you to know that as long as I'm alive, that I'm going to remind you of the things about Jesus, right? Right? And so as long as I am in this body, as Peter said, uh, the Word of God was important. And the Word of God, uh, some, of, uh, some people have not heard the Word of God one time, but you and I have heard the Word of God many times. We are so blessed, we don't even realize how blessed we really are. We are blessed. Praise God. And uh, I'm thankful tonight that you are here. Things most precious, we're going to skip number one and two because that's up to you to fill in that where it says in your personal life, list the five uh, people. Number two says list five or more things that are most valuable to you. Everybody has things that's valuable to you. You, you wouldn't give them away. Nobody could buy them maybe. Because they're so valuable to you. I have a lady next door to me that I did fencing for the last three years or so. Two and a half years or three. And so her fencing is done as far as I'm concerned <laughs> now. But uh, she, there is, a, there is a home there. It's been vacant. She says it's not for sale and it's not for rent. For 32 years she could have rented it. Can you imagine? Can you add that up real quick? At uh, sixteen hundred dollars a month, just for example, for thirty-two years, how much she could have made on that empty house, or how much she could even get right now with the 
market, and of course the market's changing somewhat right now, the housing market, how much should, could she sell that house for? It would probably be somewhere close to $600,000. She says it's not for rent and it's not for sale. So she has forfeited many thousands, many thousands of dollars of rent and she continues to forfeit the sale price of that same home where she does not live. She doesn't live there. Nobody lives there. I see her once in a while. So there are some things that are not for sale. They're not even for rent. In our walk with God, it's not even for rent. It's not even for rent. Satan has no part of it. Our salvation with the Lord. His part is to trip us up and to make us fall and to deceive us and to steal and to kill and to destroy. Those are the three things he does. He's very good at doing that or attempting to do that. But we have to be very good at counteracting him with the word of God. Just like Jesus did when he was tempted. He said, it is written. It is written. It is written. So we're not wasting our time here tonight. Even though there are a few of us. We don't have music, number one. Or, uh, some, a lot of people are not unable to be here. I'm thankful for each one of you that are. And I have prayed as always, and uh, I usually spend um, Tuesday night working on, <laughs> on these because I'm slow, and uh, I would like to have something that would be a blessing to you. Praise God. So I went to bed at 4 o'clock this morning. When did you go to bed? Think about that. And then, uh, so I appreciate your attention to these things let's look at number three some things the bible says are precious the bible itself says some things are precious and a is the blood of christ the blood of jesus christ is precious is precious uh first peter 1 and 18 the word of god first samuel 3 and 1 the word of god is precious is precious you can't put a price on it and then the thoughts of God, Psalms 139, 17. The thoughts of God are precious. Remember, his thoughts are above our thoughts and his ways are above our ways. Even as the heaven is above the earth are his thoughts and his ways above my ways. Praise God. And so uh, even Jesus in, the, in Gethsemane, he said, not my will, but thine be done. And he knew what the will of God was, for he was God. And he knew that in order to save my soul and your soul, he had to die. He had to shed his blood. Hebrews 9.22 tells you that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Our sins needed to be washed away. We need to thank Jesus every day for the benefits we have of serving him, including remission of sins. What is baptism for? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the remission of sins. It is as though that water in the baptistry were the blood of Jesus Christ to wash away our sins. And so, uh, the thoughts of God, and then the exceeding great and precious promises of God. God has given us many promises. The Bible has a lot of promises. Some of them I don't want. He's promised to the wicked. He's promised to the evil. He's promised to Satan. He's promised those negative things like that. But then to the people of God, those who are obedient to his word, he's given us exceeding great and precious promises. So the promises of the Lord Jesus Christ are precious, are precious. Praise God. Truth, Psalms 119, 72. And then uh, truth is so precious, it says buy the truth and sell it not. The truth is not for sale. Praise God. The truth that God has re revealed uh, to oneness people, the oneness of the Godhead, repentance, baptism, Jesus' name, receiving the Holy Ghost, there's only one God. 
are so different than what most of the world believes. But the truths that we hold and that we live by and that if necessary that we die by are precious. Those truths are precious. We should never let them go. We should never compromise with the world or with other churches that are not familiar with the plan of salvation. We should never compromise. There is no compromise, praise God, because we need to stand for truth, stand for truth, buy the truth and sell it not. I believe it was Jesus who said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. It will not set you free to do as you please. It will set you free to do the will of Almighty God. Some people said, I'm free. Some people think that United Pentecostal people are bound and that they are in, the word is bondage. You're in bondage. There's nobody binding me today. I serve Jesus because I want to serve Jesus. I serve Jesus because, and love him because he first loved me and gave his life a ransom for many. And so I have no reason not to love the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. I have many reasons to serve him with all my soul, mind, and strength because he's my Lord and he's my God. And I love him and he loves me. He loves me. Aren't you glad God loves you? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Why did he come? He came to seek and to save that which was lost. Who's that? That's you and me without Jesus. We are lost. That's this world. That's your neighbors that don't know God. That's everybody in the city of Napa and in this entire state, in this entire world who doesn't have Jesus Christ abiding in their heart and in their life. And so uh, all of these things are precious. The trial of the saints' faith. Peter wrote to, the, to a group of people, the saints of God in his day, and they were being persecuted. There were, being peop- there were people being put to death for this gospel. It was a bloody time. And uh, so we have our confidence in God and the trial of your faith, Peter said, is more precious than gold or silver that perisheth. You may say, well, I have some trying, I've had some trying times as a Christian. I didn't know where to go except to God. I went to God and he saw my need and he helped me and he blessed me. And he showed me the way. And he opened a way where there was no way. Just like he did at the Red Sea for the children of Israel. Praise God. So he said, stand still and see the salvation of God. Sometimes we get beside ourselves whenever we face difficulties and trials and temptations and tribulations. And we face things that break your heart. But just stand still. God sees it all. And he is the answer. He is the answer. And he will help us in so many ways. These are things most precious. These are most precious things in your life. Praise God. Now we have some other handouts. Uh, Sorry, can you help us again? Um, We have some, I think there's several here left over. Those of you who did not get a handout, please take one of these. Um, All right. And this is what we're uh, just touching on tonight. Our relationship with God is one of the most precious things. It involves eternity, salvation of your soul. It is precious. You can't put a value on it. Whatever you have to do to serve God and make heaven your home will be worth it all. It will be worth it all. Part of the scriptures that we're reading, the people who wrote those scriptures, the Apostle Paul was beheaded in Rome under Nero. After all of the writing of most of your New Testament scriptures, Paul was beheaded. God knew that. The Apostle Peter that wrote uh, First and Second Peter, the Apostle Peter who stood with the eleven on the day of Pentecost and proclaimed Acts 2.38 that we believe, 
was crucified upside down under the Roman government as well. Every one of the disciples that we call apostles of Jesus Christ met their fate in martyrdom except John. And they tried to martyr him. But God wasn't done with him. I don't believe God's done with anybody here tonight. Aren't you glad? Praise God. And so when God's not done with you, he has a way of protecting and shielding you and so forth. And uh, like nobody else can. So your relationship with God involves eternity and salvation of your soul. Abundant spiritual life. He is our sustainer. He is our final judge. It's important you have a good relation with Jesus Christ because there are those he's going to say, I knew you. Uh, you know, I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you uh, visited me. I was hungry and you fed me. I was, uh, uh, I was naked and you clothed me and all this. And they said, when did we ever do that to you, Jesus? And he said, inasmuch as you've done it unto the least, of these that you you've done it unto me and so it's important what we do to each other isn't it praise God and so uh, Jesus said I will never leave nor forsake you he has given to us of his spirit which is the Holy Ghost the spirit of Christ to uh, direct us in the in the path in truth and in the paths of righteousness and we are Need to be walking in the Spirit. One of the keys to living for God is walking in the Spirit. That involves your connection with Jesus Christ. Praise God. Because He can give you your marching orders. He can tell you. He can lead you into all truth of life. And He can direct your path through the day. And through your life. And that is so important. Praise God. A life that's not lived for Jesus Christ is a wasted life. I don't want any of my kids to be lost. Do you want any of your kids to be lost? Never. Praise God. But the normal tendency is to, for water to run downhill. The normal, the normal tendency of our humanity is not to serve God. It's to serve ourself and to serve the world, to serve our flesh. Praise God. I just thought of a scripture where Paul in Galatians is taught writing to the believers in Galatians. And he says, all they that are Christ's, all, everybody said all, all they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh and the lusts thereof. That means they put God first. That they didn't just do what they wanted to do, you know. What you want to do may be what God wants you to do. Well, do it by all means. But so many times what our flesh wants to do is not what God wants that flesh to do. And so he has a remedy for that. And it's a death. It is a crucifixion where we crucify our flesh. Praise God. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. I'm not living, but Christ is living in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. But it involves a crucifixion. What did Jesus say? He said, if any man will follow me, let him take up his cross daily. What's a cross for? It's for crucifixion, right? And that may seem negative to you, but we will have great success if we follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Hear his voice and do his will. Keep his commandments. Serve him as our Lord and our God and our Savior. Praise God. I believe we're going to make it if we can do that. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God with all thy soul, all your mind, all your strength. Jesus was asked by the young man, he says, 
What is the greatest commandment of all? And Jesus said those very words. The greatest commandment is to put God first. Hear, O Israel, love him with all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. That requires a crucifixion. We don't like that, but it requires a crucifixion. Not my will, but thine be done. Pray Jesus in Gethsemane. Okay, um, so we walk in the Spirit. And then number six says, others, our natural family. Some of these things are going to overlap with our lesson tonight. Um, these are things most precious. Praise the Lord. Brother uh, Morales, what would you give for any of your children tonight? Somebody said, I'd have to have at least a dollar for Brother Willis. <laughs> have to have at least a dollar. I think he's worth a dollar. Well, I don't know what kind of a compliment that was. But uh, I hope I'm worth more than a dollar. Praise God. You may have to ask my wife. She might send me for free. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, what would you take for any of your kids? He's shaking his head. They're not for sale, are they? They're not for sale. My wife has uh, six sisters and a baby brother. And so some of the kids, when they were all pretty little and stuff, they said, you know, we have to share all this stuff, you know. There's nobody here like that tonight, maybe. And so we have to share all this stuff. All I get is hand-me-downs. So-and-so wore that last year. You know, all I get is hand-me-downs. I don't like it. I can't stand it. Makes me angry, whatever. Okay, well then. Which one of the kids would you like to send back? Do you want to send Marlene back? You want to see, send Mildred back? You want to send Shannon back? You want to see, send Rita back? Uh, and we could go on. There's eight kids all together. Which one do you want to send back? And then they decided we want to keep them all. We're going to keep all our sisters and our spoiled little brother. You're going to keep him too. Praise God. And so your natural family, your children, your spouse, and parents. How about your spouse if you're married here tonight? What is the value of your spouse? Think of that. What would Brother Zivni do without Sister Zivni? You know? Without Sister Zivni, Travis wouldn't have any brothers and stuff, you know, as far as I can tell. Praise God. And so your spouse is valuable. Your spouse is valuable. And uh, so these are precious, precious things. I thank God for every family in this church. And if you're a single person in this church, God bless you. You are important too. Praise God. Uh, and then uh, your spiritual family. Well, I missed your parents. Your parents are precious. You wouldn't be here without your parents. Sorry, it's just the way it is. Without your parents, you wouldn't be here. And so they, we need to honor our parents. Praise God. First commandment with promise is honor thy father and thy mother. First commandment, God gives a promise with that one. And that is that we honor them. Okay, and then moving on here, uh, our spiritual family. What is the value of this church to you? Sometimes people lose their vision. They lose their way. They forget the value of people like Brother and Sister Sessions who are not here and brag on them since they're not here. But also, everyone here is valuable. You are a somebody with God and with your church family. Praise God. It's not the same it's not the same if somebody's not, not here. We're missing people tonight. We wish they were here. Praise God to hear this lesson that I spent so much time on. Okay? Um, and so you're, and all of these things is what Brother Bledsoe has been preaching for several weeks about your oikos. Ring a bell? Your oikos. It is your, your relations your family, your friends, your church, family. 
Uh, I'll just share a little insight with you. Whenever my wife and I sit down to eat, it doesn't matter which meal it is. But you know what we do whenever we pray over our food and give God thanks for his blessings? We pray for our church family. That's you. We pray for you. We also pray for some neighbors we've been dealing with for four or five years. We want to see them saved. We want their, in that particular case, those two little girls that would just win your heart. They are amazing. We want to see them saved. We want to see them full of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. And so uh, we pray for we pray for our church family. We pray for our, our immediate family. Pray for Patricia's mother, my brother, my sister, all of our immediate family, my two boys, Dustin and Rustin, and their wives, Crystal and Yaritza, and our three grandsons, one set of twins, Logan and Zachary and Josh, little Josh is about twice the size he ought to be for a three-year-old, four-year-old, three-year-four. And so we pray for all them. So our relatives, our family, our church family, we pray for you. Usually about two or three times a day. And you need to pray for each other, right? You need to pray. Because brother so-and-so may be going through a trial that's bigger than he is, but it ain't bigger than Jesus is. You understand what I'm saying? Praise God. Sister Brenda may be going through a trial that's bigger than she is. She may or may not know what to do in that particular trial. But Jesus knows. Jesus knows. And he's the way maker. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And then number seven, last of all, your health. Your health. And I just put here, be good to the man you're going to be. Be good to... I've got about three and a half or four pounds right here from lack of activity because I've been doing too much shopping and too much other stuff than activities, right? So I don't, I don't want to weigh 350 pounds, okay? Because it's going to limit me. And so I have to take care of my health. Uh, if I don't take the uh, medications that my doctors pre prescribe for me, I probably, possibly could have been dead years ago. I don't know. And so you have to take your medications and stuff. Some of them you take with a grain of salt because you don't know if they even know what they're talking about or not. But if you do what you're told, in the name of Jesus, and everything's going to be okay, we trust. And then whenever he gets ready for you to leave, you're gone, right? Right? You're gone. Praise God. But don't leave without permission. Okay? We all want to know, if you're thinking about leaving, we don't want you leaving. Okay? There's too much work to do. Many hands make light work. Right? Isn't that right, sis? Many hands make light work. But you do it all by yourself, and you'll find out that it could be a tough nut to crack because you have to do it all by yourself. Yeah, anybody ever had to do stuff by yourself? Yeah, I see that in. Okay. So, uh, it, it's a lot more fun as a rule. It's a lot more challenging sometimes if you have other people help you do it. Right? And it gets done quicker, easier, less expensive maybe, uh, and so forth. All right. So, your health. Guard your health because you belong to Jesus. I'm not sure if the Lord will be pleased with me if I had to come up here and I weighed 350 pounds. I'm not sure. I'm not sure he'd be pleased with me doing that. For one, it'd be hard to make a lap around the building, right? It'd be hard for me to help Brother Bloodsoe and different ones that does, has the work days and, you know, well, man, I can't, sorry, I can't do any. I'll pray for you, but can't do nothing. Praise God. And so thank God for our health. Take care of it. Be good to the man you're going to be. Praise God.
All right. That finishes the review of that lesson. Now, uh, I want to talk to you, and I do have a handout here for you. Uh, and it's about 8.15 right now. So if you can bear with me, this is part one of two. And I, usually when I get into a subject, I find out it's bigger than I am. I didn't realize that subject was that big. And so I usually will say, and a whole lot more that I didn't say, right? And so uh, I want us to look at things that matter. We just looked at things most precious, things that are most precious. And now we want to, and those things are things that matter also. And so your handout I'm going to give you, uh, I'd appreciate it if you, if you keep it. It's hole punched and stapled, always is. And uh, I'm going to give you a note here. A sister Bible study was taught by myself, Things Most Precious, originally on 416 of 08 in the annex, while the auditorium sprinkler systems were being installed. A slightly revised version was taught again on 710 of 19. And that was 11 years later. Because things most precious that we're talking about tonight are things that matter, there will be some overlap between these two important topics. Now, I'm going to give you an introduction, okay? There are many actions, choices, scenarios, preferences, or things in our current world that are of little importance, or they may be insignificant at all. In other words, they don't matter. It doesn't matter. However, there are other things which are of supreme importance and of current or eternal value to ourselves, other people, and to God. To these things we should give our diligent attention because they affect our lifestyle, our witness as a Christian. Sounds important, doesn't it? And ultimately, your destiny where you're going to spend eternity, a lot of those things, they matter. They matter. There are some things that if you do, you're not going to make it. They matter. There are a lot of other things that if you do, you're going to make it. God's going to approve you. And He's going to say, enter into the joys of thy Lord. You've been faithful over a few things and I'll make you ruler over much. Right? That's what we want to hear. Okay. And so to these things that are so, things that matter so much, we should give a, til, a diligent attention because they affect these things. Our witness as a Christian, ultimately our destiny, as we said. And this study will include an incomplete list. This isn't everything. In fact, we'll mention a number of things next Wednesday night that are things that matter and we hope to complete this lesson. I'm not going to drag it out for 10 or 12 weeks or whatever because I think uh, by the time we get done with part one, part two, you'll understand better what really matters. What really matters. Uh, this study will include an incomplete list of things that matter for our consideration. Number one, uh, is the salvation of our soul matters. It matters. It matters where you spend eternity. You and I can never, cannot fathom how long eternity is. Actually, it's unending. It is forever. It is extremely important that we make heaven our home at any cost. At any cost. Whatever it costs you. Go to heaven. Right? And so Matthew 16, 26, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world? A lot of people sell out. They lose, lose, with, lose out with God because they may be sold out for some little drug or some little cancer stick or some little pleasure that lasts for 20 seconds or whatever the case might be. They sold out. How about eternity? How long is eternity? It's forever. It matters. Your salvation matters. 
It matters so much to Jesus that he came and gave his, the blood of his body, precious blood for our salvation. He gave us a plan of salvation. He gave us a five-fold ministry. He gave us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to teach us the ways of God and what we ought to know and what we ought, how we ought to be and what we ought to do in our life. He's given us all these things because salvation matters. Salvation matters. When you see a soul walking down the street, do you just see a person in shorts or ragged blue jeans, uh, uh, just another human being, what have you? Or do you see a soul that's on their way to a devil's hell? What do you see? We need to be aware of that because Jesus said, you're the light of the world. This world sits in darkness and it's getting worse. Anybody here believe it's getting worse? Anybody here think it's getting progressively better all the time? I don't think so. The scripture says that it's going to get worse. Okay, We'd like for it not to be that way. And in some ways it may be better, but in so many other ways it's getting worse. And so... Uh, our salvation matters. What's a man profited if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul? That's what Jesus said. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What's your soul worth? Are you willing to sell it out for real cheap? A lot of people are doing that today. It, does, it's, it is not profitable. It's not profitable. Praise God. Number two. Our humility before God matters. Matthew 18, 4, 23, 12. I hope you'll take the time to look these up because I didn't just type them all out. Uh, 1 Peter 5 and 6. And some of these scriptures tell us that we need to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. What happens whenever you do that? He exalts you. Do you want the Lord to promote you, to exalt you, to use you in a greater way than ever before? Don't you want to be a soul winner for God? Anybody here want to be a soul winner? Let's see a hand. Anybody here? Okay, there's several hands. We need to be a soul winner. We need to bless God and be a value, uh, a positive uh, member of his body. God, uh, I, said, I was saying this just uh, the other day, God expects a return on his investment. He's invested a lot in me and he's invested a lot in you. God, wants, God would like to have a return on his investment. I'm not trying to put you under condemnation or anybody or even myself. But God has done so much for me, I cannot tell at all. Praise God. And what he has given me, he wants to give everybody else. And so, God help us to be soul winners, to be soul conscious. All right, so our humility... Uh, before God matters. In Micah 6 and 8 in the Old Testament, He has shown thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly. Everybody said, do justly. And to love mercy. Everybody said, love mercy. And what else? The third thing of the three is, and to walk humbly with thy God. You keep God in His place. You serve Him. You love him. You prefer him. I'm sorry. I can't live that way because it would not please my Jesus. Praise God to walk humbly with thy God. The greatest gifts of God, I've mentioned this numerous times in the last 30 something years. The greatest gifts of God are found on shelves, one beneath another. As you humble yourself before God, you want the greatest gifts? Humble yourself before God and you'll find the greatest gifts on the bottom shelf. It's whenever you submit yourself to God. Praise God. Number three. Now we only have three, four, five, six, seven. We only have seven things here. This is number three and we'll probably be done. I won't promise but we'll probably be done in about 10 or 15 minutes. 
Praise God. Don't leave without one of these handouts uh, if you're able to do that. All right, so uh, number three is listening to our conscience matters. Have you ever been in a situation where you were tempted to do something, whatever it was, it may have been a sin, it may have been a revenge, it might have been some, maybe a thought. It could have been songs you were listening to that are in godly, worldly songs. They don't do Jesus any good. They don't do you any good. Maybe it was literature. Maybe it was just picture books. All picture books are not evil, but some are. And then you thought, you know what? I should not be saying this or doing this or I should not be here. I don't belong here. If Jesus was here, if Jesus heard what I was listening to and saw what I'm looking at, I think Jesus would be dissatisfied. Right? You might be embarrassed if Jesus walked up in the flesh and tapped you on the shoulder and says, hey, my son, what are you doing here? Why are you doing this? You don't need to get even. I'll take care of that. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Well, if they do that again, I'm going to give them an uppercut that will lift them off their feet. You don't need to do that. I don't advise you do that. We'll come down and shoot peas to you through the bars, okay? That's a joke. You're supposed to laugh at that, okay? All right, so uh, we need to do those things always. And, uh, and part of that is our conscience. God can speak to you through your conscience. You say, I don't feel right about that. And we've all had God do that for us. Your conscience can speak to you. The still, small voice. Remember when Elijah was running from Jezebel? He went here, he went there. He had just slain 800 of the false prophets. And Jezebel said, by this time tomorrow, you're going to be like one of those 800 false prophets. 400 prophets of the grove and 400 prophets of Baal. You're going to be just like them, buddy, because I'm hunting you down. And so what did Elijah do? He took off. He left. He finally wound up in a cave. And you know what God asked him whenever he heard the still small voice? It wasn't in the earthquake. And it wasn't in the great fire. But it was in the still small voice. And Elijah wrapped his face in a mantle and went outside the cave to face God. And God's question was, what are you doing here? Are you afraid of Jezebel just because she's going to have your head a couple of days ago? Why are you here? And so uh, we, need some, we often need to listen to our conscience because it just might be God talking to you to save you a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. Okay. Our sense of what is right or wrong can be of great value in pre preventing much confusion, shame, trouble. And this one I think of often. Heartache. Heartache. If you don't listen to your conscience and you do wrong and God is not on your side at that moment, you could have a lot of heartache. Praise God. When I was pastoring, I had, uh, 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 you have different people, different strokes for different folks and what have you. And occasionally you'll have someone that says, how about my husband? They are upset with their husband. They don't like their husband. He is stupid. He doesn't do nothing right. He don't know how to do anything. He can't shop for groceries. He don't know how, how the vacuum cleaner feels in his hand. He's never changed a diaper. I'm upset with him. I don't like him no more. And so, what does God do? 
Well, just uh, wait on the Lord. And as you do that, you may find out he ain't as bad a guy as you thought he was. Praise God. When he's hovering over your bed, rubbing your feet, rubbing your shoulders, tending to you, doing all the things, praise God, that need to be done for you. Hi, Sister Willis. We love you, girl. Then maybe he wasn't so bad after all. Praise God. Can you say praise the Lord? <laughs> okay. All right. So listening to our conscience uh, can matter. It just may be God's talking to you. And then uh, the, the fourth, we're moving along here. The fourth is our core values matter. Now I left this, I just mentioned this because Brother Bledsoe is pre- uh, teaching and preaching on this right now. Did you notice that? He's talking about core values. Were you here last Wednesday night? Were you here the Wednesday before? He's teaching and preaching about core values. So this is going to be his baby to rock, okay? And he'll probably use some of the things that we're talking about tonight in our core values. It's important that you have core values. It's internal stuff. Remember under the law, it was external, wasn't it? They had to go back and do the sacrifices all over again. You bring a bullock here, you bring a lamb there for this sin, for that sin, for whatever sin. Then lo and behold, if you sin again, here you come again. It's like the word of God chiseled on stone, Ten Commandments, what have you. But he says, I'll put my law in your heart and in your mind so that you can serve me out of your heart because your heart's been changed. Your heart has been filled with his spirit. Praise God. And so, uh, core values, Brother Bledsoe will take care of that. Our sensitivity to the voice and the word of God matters. It matters that you believe what your pastor is teaching you, right? And it's important that that comes out of the word of God, right? And so, these things are important. Sensitivity to the voice and the word of God matters. What does it take for you to obey God? Think of that. What's it take for me? I'm talking to me too, okay? What's it take for me to obey God? And so John 10, 3 through 9, verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. If, you're, if you are a sheep of the shepherd, Jesus Christ, then you know his voice. And he, uh, he expects you to follow him. Then... Can anybody tell me the book, uh, the book and the chapter in the whole Bible that almost every verse in that chapter, which is a hundred and some odd verses long, talks about the word of God, the commandments of the Lord, his precepts, and on and on and on has a, a word that talks about it's the word of God. Anybody know? Okay. Travis is on to it. Hound dog. Psalms 119. Psalms 119. Bible school, we've, we went through that. And there's only about four verses in the whole chapter of a hundred and some odd verses that doesn't mention about the Word of God, His precepts, His commandments, His statutes, uh, all of these things, interchangeable words. And so... Uh, our sensitivity to the word of God matters. Thy word have I hidden my heart that I might not sin against thee. Remember that? Psalms 119. There it is. Okay, so. Uh, and then next to last. And uh, we'll, we'll stop after these last two. Our career. This is something that uh, high schoolers, especially or high school graduates, whatever you, they worry about a lot. What am I going to do? The one little boy made it simple. He says, when I grow up, he says, I want to be a fire truck. When I grow up, I want to be a fire truck. Well, I think he probably meant a fireman, right? What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be an adult when I grow up, right? 
Okay, so uh, your career, your work ethic. Your work, uh, your work ethic is a testimony for Jesus Christ. Do you know that? Your work ethic. Are you always late? Do you always want to use your sick leave? I think I had over a thousand hours of sick leave whenever I uh, retired. Uh, how about your work ethic? Do you come and punch in and do your job? Or do you come and punch in? I used to get really aggravated when we worked Saturdays at Social Security for time and a half whenever it was necessary. They needed people there because there was work to be done. It used to bug me because I used to be a, and I'll talk more about this next week, but I used to be a supervisor. And so part of my job was making sure you did your job, right? Part of my job was making sure you did your job because there's a chain of command, right? You don't do your job, they may get your job. Who knows? And so uh, your work ethic is important. Brother Price, what did Brother Price say? Anybody here remember Brother Price said? He says, if you can't be on time, what? Be early. If you can't be on time, be early. That's what Brother Price said, in case you didn't remember that. Okay, so your work ethic. You spend half your time at the water cooler, you know, discussing this and that and the other. I used to get so, uh, so upset because I had been a supervisor and I knew that these people are getting time and a half. Some of them are probably getting, what's 20 and a half is 10. Some of them are getting 30, maybe 30 or 40 bucks. Some of those that were maybe in a higher level were probably getting 40 or 50 bucks an hour. What were they doing? They were talking to their neighbor. They were wasting time. Oh, you hear? Now, what? You see that TV show last night? Blah, 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 blah. They were sitting there wasting time. Time is, what is time? Money. Time is money to an employer, especially. And time is money to you if you get paid, especially by the hour. Okay, so your work ethic. Uh, are you dependable? Are you reliable? And your job performance. Do you do your job? Do you try to do everybody else's job? Or do you do your job? Do you do your job well? Have you had training so that you have no excuse for doing a lousy job? You do your job well. It's done efficiently. It's done according to the book, Right? My son Rustin left uh, one hospital and moved to another hospital because the new hospital under new management wanted him to do things that would affect his, uh, his license as a nurse. He says, I'm sorry, it's my license, not yours. I can't do that because that is against the rules for my license, right? How's your work ethic? Do you cut corners here? Take a little longer break than usual, whatever. You know, there may be some circumstance where you had to do that. I don't know. Tell your boss about it, right? And so uh, your work ethic. Also, your attitude, your attitude. Now, whenever, uh, I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about this this time. But your attitude makes a lot of difference. I had uh, a few part-timers in the electronics plant where I worked, we built precision wire wound resistors. We put resistors on the moon. We put resistors into nuclear submarines. We put resistors in the, that was in the Trident program. And we put resistors in Mars. From our little company, we put precision wire wound resistors in all of those programs and a whole lot more because that was federal programs. Okay, And so in my department, I had like uh, five, five uh, many departments in one in the processing of those resistors. 
and occasionally we had two more processes that made seven processes. We had approximately 35 employees. They were all women, except for one man who set up our equipment. Praise God. It's a wonder I'm not henpecked after 35, 34 women employees, right? Praise God. Ladies have taught me things in my life. Praise God. And so forth. But um, you can take one person. I had, I had some employees. They were super, super. Man, they could turn out a thousand, point, uh, a thousand parts in the day in that particular piece of the production. They were fast. They were good. Praise God. Whenever I sat down and gave them an interview, all those employees, they had to have an annual interview, right? Anybody here ever had an annual, annual interview, review? I should say review. That's where your boss sits down with you and he talks about all your good stuff. And then he turns around and talks about all your bad stuff, right? And so there, uh, there are people. It's quantity and quality, in the industrial world, it's quality and quantity. Do you do a lot of work? Yes. What's the quality of your work? It's trash. So what, how much did you accomplish? Zero. So there has to be a balance, doesn't there? There has to be a balance between quantity and quality. But along with that is attitude. You take somebody who comes into the, into the job site. They are angry every day. They're throwing stuff around. They're hurting everybody's feelings. Well, you sure look pretty today. Who fixed your hair? You know. Or did your hair get fixed or not? You know, that's just a little illustration. In other words, their attitude... Their attitude, the value of the progress of the department is hindered by that person's attitude. They have a sorry attitude. They don't like the management. They don't like the product. They don't like being here. I hate it because I had to come to work today. Keep my paycheck. No, they don't say that. Right. Okay, so all of these things... Uh, matter. Okay, maybe th three more minutes and we're done. Um, so your career, your worth ethic, your attitude, and your job performance matters. God's people should be some of the most trustworthy, reliable, honest, dependable, and conscientious employees the employer will ever have. You need to do a good job, just like other scriptures. I don't have it here, but other scriptures say, do it. And whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it heartily as unto God. In other words, it's like you're working for Jesus. It's like he's your master, he's your employer. So do your job as heartily as unto the Lord. Do you ever work that way? I have. Praise God. I have. Uh, here's some, several scriptures. First Timothy 5 and 8 says that, But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. An infidel is an unbeliever. He doesn't love God. And so it's important uh, that we provide for our own, our own house. Praise God. We make a living for our family. God will help us to do that. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Put God first. You'll be glad you did. Praise God and he will bless you. All right. Uh, the last one. Seeking and doing the will of God in your life matters. Anybody here want to do the will of God? 
Anybody here want to do the will of God? If you don't do anything, do the will of God. Praise God. And so, uh, 1 John 2.17, But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. That sounds like heaven to me. If you can do the will of God. Whenever I was an 18-year-old, uh, I walked the aisles of the church where I grew up from age 12 in Grand Junction, Colorado. So my way to uh, Fort Collins to Colorado State. And uh, it was a lonely time. It was a lonely time. It was a little bit of a scary time because I was going into a world that I was not familiar with. And uh, I needed God to help me. One thing I promised God as I walked the hardwood floors of that church, back and forth, all by myself, says, God, if I can't please my mom, if I can't please my sister, if I can't please my pastor, I must Please, God. He's the judge, right? Praise God. I want to thank you for your attention tonight. Praise the Lord. I didn't see anybody go to sleep. There's nobody bump their heads on the pew in front of you and so forth. But I want you to have this handout. Please don't leave without your handout. Okay, let's stand together. Praise God. Let's pray together as, uh, as we close. Continue to remember those that are on vacation. Any other needs that you know about. Remember the service Sunday morning. Uh, there may be announcements that I don't know about, but Sunday morning, uh, Brother uh, Lowell Anderson and his wife and family are supposed to be here to uh, preach to you the word of the Lord. Praise God. Let's pray together. Could you pray out loud and love the Lord? We love you, Jesus, tonight. We thank you, O oh God, for the time that we spent together here. My prayer for these precious people that we love is that your word will resound in their hearts and in their minds, that they would serve you in these last days, O oh God, as only, and direct us as only as you can. Teach us thy ways. Order our steps, O oh God. Help us not to be hearers only of your word, but also help us to be doers, Lord. Keep us safe in your hands. Protect and shield our souls and our lives and order our steps day by day that we might please you and that you might say, well done. Thank you again, Lord, for your people. And everybody said in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. Lord bless you. You are officially dismissed. Lord bless you. Be sure and get your hand out. Praise God. Brother Phillips, can you help us hand these out?